What's up guys, we're back here with another deck list today, and of course this is part of the new format, uh, Build Beauties, I believe is the coin, or the, the term that we've coined for this this format, but it's really cool, it's where I take you know players from the community, and they pick a deck that they would like to showcase, and we go over the deck and kind of review it. So, I have my two guests here today, of course my first guest, Anthony Tardino, go ahead and say hi, Anthony. Hey, what's going on guys? And then I got my second guest, who will be the one reviewing this deck directly, go ahead and say your name who i am who are you shane. shane listen you idiot oh you didn't your audio didn't come in homie oh no <laughs> oh man so we're gonna go over adept android 18 hero 18 and now shane is well known for playing all flavors of android 18 so of course he's the person i think personally first to go and ask about android 18 so go ahead shane why don't you tell us why this combination Oh no, is Shane dead? So it all started oh. back and I shouldn't be dead. Oh no, I just couldn't hear you. Go ahead. Well, I'm also a great start. So <laughs> the idea of this kind of dates all the way back to set eight, actually, where I had a physical beat down villain eighteen list in Adept. Uh what Adept lets you do is just go in real fast and you search your drills immediately. And Hero 18, in my opinion, has made it viable to actually do this with energy beats instead of physical beats, especially now that Palm Charge exists. You, you don't pay stages for your energy attacks, so you're not limited by how many stages you have. You can just keep going. And she makes her named attack styled. So Toss can search our drill and Android attack drill at the same time, and I was like, that's got to be good. I should be able to hold that. Well, I mean, the concept sounds pretty sound, of course. Uh, well, why don't we start going through your, maybe your board cards real quick, and you can kind of start explaining the theme of the deck here. We've got Krillin and Android 17 allies. Their value is way too high not to run. You really should never cut them. Krillin is an Omni block and a mod once he's out. Android 17 is a searchable combat ender. And then once they're on the stage, or on the board. The fact that they can let you redirect stages and soak up damage is pretty crazy, so they're just too powerful not to run. But everyone knows that. That's boring to talk about. So the drills are where things are a little more interesting. Yeah. Um, two devouring drill, so that we can climb levels as quickly as possible. Anytime you draw memory outside of combat, you are pretty much going to search devouring drill every time because you just want to level. We want to get to four. That's all we're about. Two is enough. I only run two in my adaptive build as well. Then, of course, we run Android Attack Drill. Gotta have it. R Drill. Gotta have it. Captivity Drill is the least good drill, but it saves you so many times. Against physical beatdown, if you have Captivity Drill out, you can gain so many stages that they basically can't hurt you, even if the anger doesn't do anything. I played against Anthony's Ruthless Mod with Vegeta, and with Orange Quick Toss, I was gaining five stages every time I hit. Physical Ugh. can't beat that. Uh, intensity Drill is just dumb. Yeah. That's really stupid free card. Uh, speaking of stupid free cards, Orange Provoking Drill is the dumbest card that they've printed in a long time. This card is completely ridiculous. Why can I have up to five drills? I can have almost every drill in my deck on the board and still use Provoking Drill. Really stupid. Why? Why? Uh, and then checkup drill is checkup drill. Checkup drill is checkup drill. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting to see some freestyle drills ran in an adept build. And devouring drill is always, you know, I think it's always forgotten that you can tutor devouring drill with adept mastery. But I still, most, you know, most adept decks are trying to just do like anger physical if they're trying to level. Otherwise, they're just kind of like camp. So that's that's pretty interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I got that from Eric. I actually PM'd him. Eric Ng. The, yeah, yep. Eric Ng. I PM'd him the night that I built this deck. I PM'd him to see how many Devouring Drill he was running in his Adept Videl back when he was playing that. Yeah. And he was running two, so I was like, okay, I should run two. Because I was already going to run two. That just seemed right to me. But I wanted the confirmation from uh, oh. such a great player. So... He, yeah, that's where I, I got the idea from it's yeah. all from him 
Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. That is definitely there's been a couple different engines I know that he's worked on through Orange that I've kind of have become the standard it seems like uh, in play. I know one was an Orange Shore Chop into uh, Luxury with Sidestep. Uh, that was a huge one. I mean, not that that was necessarily an unknown combo, but he was really huge in popularizing that. And then like the uh, the oh wow, man, it was like just that the, he was one of the first people that was regularly I was seeing playing like the offensive like grab sidestep with. Orange sidestep with orange checkup drill kind of stuff too. He's been he's always pushing uh, the combos of every style it seems like so very very interesting. Well, let's move on to the events now. There's a fair amount of events in this deck, uh, including Timers of Warriors too, which which is down and, and Juke which are down here. But there are a lot of them. Pretty even spread between non-styled and styled. Now, can you kind of give me your reasoning why you don't run Sphere and you're running Confrontation instead? Well, I'm not running Sphere because I'm bad. That's the short answer. Sphere is like one of the best cards in the game. And you and I have been playing some retro Z lately. And every time you draw a Prompt Energy Sphere in that game, you're just like, oh, thank God, I have yeah. Sphere. Um, and honestly, Panini and Fancy are not that different. I just don't know how I would get Sphere in. I would honestly like to maybe even cut some blocks to get Sphere in there. But on pro, I think almost should be a three of it's down to two because at a certain point in this deck, you just need more attacks, like because attacks trigger your mastery. Yeah. Uh, so I went with two con pro as opposed to three, even though it's better than an attack a lot of the time. At, at the end of the day, you just need a styled attack. Unleashed is unleashed. We're kind of level, so we got to have it. Uh, meditation is another staple. I mean, it's an attack when you need it to be, and it's a hard anger attack when you need it to be. And then memory makes devouring drill work. I think if I wasn't running devouring drill, I wouldn't run memory. It's not that good. But with devouring drill, anytime you draw memory and another drill, you just threw a level. So, you know, one thing I was going to say too is I'm thinking about it. Possession drill isn't in here. Is that just because you can't tutor it? There's no time. Yeah. Like why I'm not going to spend an action drawing cards when I can spend that action killing my opponent. Hmm. Um, that's interesting. Interesting. And the only too. card that searches it, you're right, you can't search it with a mastery, and that's also big, but the drills... I'm trying to think of how to best articulate it. The whole concept of this deck was just to streamline the idea of adaptive. As soon as you start putting in cards like Possession Drill, you're unstreamlining it, and then you just should be adaptive again. That's fair. So I was gonna say there's no freezing beam or freezing drill either. There's just uh, that's that's an interesting choice too as well. Conflicts with too much. The main reason you run freezing drill is to turn off time, and we have other answers to time. Hmm. And in this deck, that's okay. even though we just said you don't need to worry about physical too much because you don't pay stages, the real problem with physical decks is when you're at zero and they're not, everyone's an F now. So their base is ridiculous. True. So you need to be able to make time work. Uh, those are those are some those are all some very interesting good I think and good answers. Um, any closing argue any Anthony any closing thoughts on like this uh, the board and the events that you can see? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't talk to me. I don't. <laughs> Did you say Anthony Frank? I'm yeah, sorry. Anthony. Uh, and Shane too. If you have any closing comments. Yeah, nothing to say. Okay. Um yeah, I think uh the the boards uh the drills in specific are are fine. Like I uh, an argument could be made for possession drill like if he wanted to draw like if he wanted to run like the draw engine type of stuff, but because he doesn't have any of that, it I think it's it works in this way. Um you know, maybe in another world, like Orange Memory could be brought down to two because he doesn't, you know, he's only got eight drills, three memory plus the mastery plus Orange PowerPoint, like those those types of like hard tutor cards. Like you, you only need so many of them with so little cards to tutor. But that's really all I have to say about that. I was thinking about that after you made the comments about how he didn't like memory. So that's it. That is that is that is something. Well, let's move on to the attack lineup now. The attack lineup, um, 
is a little surprising in some ways to me. Um, I see that you don't try to really utilize anger at all, and I know that like I think that's maybe one of the traps I see people go in with, uh, even with some sort of hybrid and adept energy builds, is they try to do really play up a captivity drill, and you're not even. You know, I don't think there's any immediate effect anger gaining energies I'm seeing here. I think the only one that actually can give you anger is fierce attack. The thing about captivity drill is the one who is captive is you when you use it. Like you are a slave to whether or not your attacks hit. And even if they hit, you're only chaining one anger, one extra anger at a time. That said, I still run it because there's so many times when you're at like two or three anger and the option to tutor captivity drill is just what makes or breaks the day. But I definitely tutor it the least out of those drills. Um, yeah. So looking at these energies, the whole top row is just like the standard. I got all my name cards, except for Android 18's arm breaker, which is not an energy attack, unfortunately. Uh, and then I've got blinding the nine classic orange cards, stare down, fierce attack, PowerPoint. So I won't comment on that because we all know that those are good cards. Running the blinding is interesting, and and like op, you know, over, say like running the arm breaker. Granted, the arm breaker's got to hit to end combat. Um, Hitting is bad. Hitting is bad. Yeah, and it is going to be like the only physical, so I can see why you don't run it. I, it I guess is it's funny a... that arm breaker would be styled though. Like that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. Being able to end combat and get a drill potentially. I think Shane would rather not make his opponent's physical blocks live. Like, yeah, if Android Armbreaker is your only physical attack in your hand, and you throw that, and your opponent red blocking hands you or blue deterrence is you, uh, not blue deterrence, but blue leverage. blue leverage. Yeah, yeah, like you're. That's like feels bad. Keep flipping moments. So. <laughs> I remember there was, I think it was Justin McBride had a orange Yash deck, I think from set, it was it was in set five, I believe still. And at the time, you know, it was only, or it was a, it's adaptive Yamcha, sorry. And uh, everybody was still, a lot of people were still running like orange launcher because of its synergy with the adaptive mastery. But he opted to not run launcher or like Sinchoke because he didn't want to make people's physical blocks worth anything. He wanted to purely go in on only energies and deny them the ability to play potentially, you know, six plus cards of their deck. So I thought that was, I think that that philosophy is very interesting and, uh, and it definitely applies here, I think, uh, very, very well. Especially with Android 18, you know, you're not really worried about getting stage locked because you minus one everything on the levels. And then you have the, the well, we'll get into the second row, the palm charge. Um Let's talk about Palm Charge. That card right there is huge. Do you think that card enabled this deck? Absolutely. It's the it's the only reason this deck has done as well as it has. It's the most important card in the deck. And what's funny about saying that is I would go as far as to say in 90% of matchups, Palm Charge really doesn't matter. But that extra, those 10% of times, it ties your whole deck together. The fact that, again, physical aggro you can completely free yourself up from needing stages you can get a reliable plus one life card modifier on your attack it patches the consistency problems this kind of deck had before in my opinion mm. and to respond to something uh that you kind of said earlier about uh, making energy block five there is merit to putting your opponent into a hesitating situation where they don't know what block to hold because you run both kinds of attacks. That's definitely, for me, the most frustrating thing about playing enhanced decks is they have great physicals and great energies that you don't want to hit. Yeah. However, and then against this deck, you just hold your energy block. You know what's coming. You're like, okay, I just got to hold my energy block. That's just how it is. But in my opinion none of the physicals have enough immediate value to compensate for the potential mix-up. There isn't an orange physical that I could put into this deck, in my opinion, that would say, hit, win the game. Well, I know Bicycle Kick is one of those ones that a lot of combative decks, for example, run. And combative very is very, very similar to Adept in terms of your plus wanting a drill out in a turn. Um, you're able to bounce drills 
Uh, but I feel like I also do feel like bicycle kick works in some of those combat decks because they're able to run distracting drill, um, which makes it more a little bit more worthwhile. So they also have a lot more drills that are maybe situational. I feel like that they might really want to get to. So absolutely crashing drill and torching drill as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could definitely be a good add because it's going to hit hard. You know, it's going to do at least six stages most of the time. Yeah. However, I've never wanted it. I don't know. Compared to these other attacks, like I said before, I just need energy attack density at a certain point. Um, and bicycle kick, while it does good things, it's another card I'd be playing that is not crashing into my opponent's life deck for a million life of damage. So. I'm hesitant to run it. I think what it would do at most is it would tag checkup drill out for something else. Mm-hmm. Like I'd search checkup with the mastery, tag it out for something else. But most of the time, I don't need to do that. Like if I'm getting checkup for a block, I'm still okay. Yeah. I'm already, I've already done what I need to do. I don't need to tag it out for something else. So that's my stance on it. Plus, like, with cost getting Android attack drill, if you have a plus two life and then search checkup drill for a block, you're already winning. Yeah. So, speaking of attack density, we got Quick Toss in here. Now, that card is... I mean, you mentioned that card earlier. I mean, this card, I almost... I feel like this card doesn't need to, uh, even need to be in the second row. It should almost be in the first row because I feel like, especially with Android, uh, any human traded orange deck that's energy beats specifically on energy beats orange human trait uh there's no reason you should run quick toss this card's silly it's stupid stupid card especially with palm charge like it's just it's free six life cards of damage (laughs) yeah it's one of the few say what you will about orange giving you freebies because it does definitely does it doesn't have a lot of attack that do more than be one really good attack and quick toss is two really good attacks for the price of one. It's it's too free. Too free. Um I do agree though. I don't have anything else to say about that. Uh, uh go ahead. I I was just gonna keep moving right through the attack. No go go absolutely I was I'm yeah. Uh, one thing I will say about quick toss actually anger hate is very important. Orange is not too great at anger hate. I don't care what people say. Yeah, meditation is broken, but I've only got two of them. So having quick toss for the reliable anti anger. And it does appear to be your only attack that automatically lowers anger. Everything else has to hit and deal critical damage. Absolutely. It it saves your it's too good in this deck. It's not that great. It's still good. It's just not completely busted in adaptive eighteen. And this deck it is busted. Uh the next energy I want to talk about is sweeping blast. I'm sorry I put them out of order. But Sweeping Blast is Sweeping Blast. Uh, It's so powerful. The only reason it's not at 3 of is because it has no endurance and it isn't always live. There's a lot of time you can draw Sweeping Blast early game and you can't use it. It's flat out. Uh, 2 seems to be the perfect ratio. Uh, 18 can rejuve it if you need it for later. Um, And then we can also recycle it with one of my spicier adds, one of the, the few pieces of spice in this deck, in my opinion. Uh, energy focus, which is a card that I've never liked. I've never <clears> liked this card. I always want more kinds of energy attack as opposed to more copies of the good ones because I'm running so many drills, I don't have room to max out on all these energies. So I like need more attack options. And so instead of running energy focus, I run an entirely different attack. But in this deck, I just maxed out all the good orange attacks and I was like, well, I just want more of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll run energy focus. I mean, it's potentially five copies of some of these cards if you think about it. Um, the non mm-hmm. of these ones. So. Well, it's a big consistency booster. This deck, like it's it's all about entering early and and catching your opponent without blocks and and just melting them with like orange fierce attack and energy focus just enables that even more. Where, you know, you hit with with one power point, you ju- you see you know, the energy focus the next turn, or you have, you know, at the same turn, it's, it's just using those same attacks because you're, you're planning for a short game. That's why you're playing this card. Yeah. So. That is an interesting, that's an interesting commentary. You're playing for the short game because 
for sure there's not a ton of endurance in this deck it's it does seem incredibly just from the drill package alone it's incredibly streamlined to a certain like like one of copies of everything other than devouring gel um they're just trying to pop off quickly it seems for sure so it's it's interesting because i think shane if i can just for a second i think shane's deck specifically they're either in this direction where he is just buying all into i'm gonna destroy you in three turns two turns whatever or i'm just gonna grind you out and piss you off like this is this is a great example of sh one of Shane's play styles right here. I just want to kill you in two turns and be done and then like go go to my coffee shop and chill out and and text all my other friends about how I just destroyed you. Like <laughs> that's how I see playing Shane. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. uh, let's just touch on the one of uppercut. Ted. Why the one of oh. uppercut? Oh, forget what Kevin Curtis said. Let's talk about uppercut. Can we talk about uppercut? This is so <laughs> dumb. That is the dumbest card in this deck. I can't tell you how many times I've drawn, like, I'm, like, almost to the combo. So Uppercut is just, like, a fourth copy of the combo card, basically. So, like, if you have Fierce Attack, Uppercut will get you Sweeping Blast or Power Point or Orange Stare Down. Like, it just gets you everything. It can even get you a block. Sometimes in an Energy Mirror, you just search Dismissal and your opponent has to stop attacking you. It's so good. The only way it could be better would be if they unratted it so that I could search toss with it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but well, you can search toss with it; it's styled. No, it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, she doesn't oh, make it styled. Oh, in the it's deck. A, oh, um, it's like oh, attacks with attacks with Android. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you are correct. Yeah. yeah attack, it, yeah. believe me, dude. If I could toss, if I could uppercut for toss, I'd be running this in adaptive eighteen. <laughs> um, it's just so good. I. It. Oh, I love it. I had the idea. I know it's, it shouldn't be thought of as like a galaxy brain idea because it's so obvious. Oh, run an extra copy of your good cards. But it mm. really is so good. It, this is, that card has just been money every time. And importantly, it gets you palm cards and the matchup where you really need it. Because That's there true. are, That's true. like I said, you don't need palm cards all the time, but there are those times when you just need to have it. So the fact that you can draw uppercut, play it, search palm charge, and now your energies are all free for the rest of the game, that's a big deal. It is just a fourth copy. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, let's like I up. said before, I'm playing all the good cards at max, so let's run a fourth copy. Yeah. Um, like I said, I guess the only thing is it's like, I guess uh, um, I definitely could see some people trying to run the anger energies like rage, maybe eruption, probably not eruption, but for sure like orange rage, for example, as just extra slime. Have you considered orange rage? It did because it is always free, and it is anti-anger. However, I didn't run it. No, eruption. Uh, well, uh, you think? Uh, oh, you said you said rage. I thought you said eruption. Yeah, you talking about rage. Rage. Then the opposite is true because its immediate value is just the anger, and even with rage, you're not going to level through anger all that often. None of her levels gain anger except for her one, which is only one anger. Yeah. Um. You, you just can't rely on it, in my opinion. If you and Adept doesn't even gain anger for you unless you search Captivity Drill. And as soon as you start leaning into the anger, then it's like, oh, I have to search Captivity Drill here. I don't yeah. want to have to search Captivity Drill. I want to search whatever drill is best in the scenario. If you lean into the anger, it restricts you, in my opinion. So I do not do that. That's true. That's, that's some good reasoning. I think it just eliminates one less... It creates one less avenue for your opponent to interfere with your deck. You don't care about anger. You don't care about physical attacks. So there's two things that are very prevalent, especially right now, that your opponent, if they're building and attacking for more stronger decks, they just, they instantly, those cards lose complete value in, uh, against you, which I think is really, really good. Really good choice. So let's move on to the, the final part of the deck is the blocks. Now, um, you know, you have a lot of two ofs. You have a couple one ofs. Well, I guess however you want to tackle this. I guess what I'm really more curious about is the one ofs, and then there's a two of card that I do want to ask you about as well. So, yeah, I love this block ratio actually. Uh, blocks, I think, are the part of your deck that you should be changing the most. I know we don't have frequent events to say the least, but I I know how a lot of people like to approach the game is okay. I'll just build a deck. And I'll find 
a perfect list and then it's going to fit in my octagon folder and it's going to be just the most perfect version of the list but really because of how the meta changes uh the perfect list will morph over time and the thing you can do with your deck to change the matchup spread the most in my opinion is tweak your block ratio uh if the meta is more physical oriented run more physical blocks if the meta is more energy block oriented run more energy blocks uh my that of Ginyu list has a lot of physical blocks in it right now because I wanted to beat Eric NG uh, and his adept Gohan. So I added a ton of physical blocks. Yeah. And then I lost the tournament with it because everyone else was kind of playing control and I had all these blocks that didn't do anything for me. So in this deck, usually the game's over before you need your third copy of any block. So I do not run a lot of three of. Um, hmm. Time is time. Juke is sometimes you just need to search an Ami block with Chekhov. Like, sometimes you just don't know what's happening. You got to get Duke. Uh, energy Catch has Endurance, but Dismissal is broken. So I'm kind of going 2-2. When I was running 3 Dismissal, I missed the Endurance. And that Dismissal's was, too good. To that, was, that was what I was going to ask you about. I was surprised you just didn't go 3 Dismissal. Um, and you went to 2. I figured Energy Catch is purely Endurance, so... Yeah, it's... We'll talk about the Endurance count in a second, because... Orange yeah. wrist lock is a one of just because it has three endurance. I know that seems stupid, but I was taking hits with this deck because it's an aggro deck. And what the aggro decks do, they take hits. Uh, you just hope to hit your opponent harder. And I was getting hit so hard. It, I was just taking so much damage off of random hits. Yeah. So I made a bunch of changes. I used to just be running three dismissal, no energy catch. But putting wrist block to a one of that one extra three endurance card has saved my life so many times like it just feels better it's hard to explain but after playing a lot of games it totally matters uh swerve is a one of because it's the bad part a lot of the time it's good on certain turns against certain decks you know yeah i was also gonna say see i can see you failing to have drills a lot of the time too when you need it to be like if you, if they have initiative on you and even less Often than that is you'll have a drill, but you want to keep it. You don't want to destroy it to get another block in two stages. You want it to stay out so you can get a big mod or something. Uh, and drills are a precious resource in a deck that runs so few of them. The refocus is a three of because it's everything. It's endurance. It's a drill tutor. And the anger, I talked earlier how I don't like to lean into the anger, but the anger on this part is free. It's already terrific and then also gets you an anger. So there are combats where, like I said, you'll have two or three anger, and if you refocus for captivity drill, that might make your next attack level you, and now you can unleash a whole new onslaught on your opponent. Yeah. So. Interesting. That's the, I know it's block lineup to say the least, but it it has, it has made the deck flow better, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, it's the balance between having endurance and good effects. I feel like I feel like generally, I suppose, I, I don't know the play style of the deck per se for how you play it, but I, I can definitely see why running the lower blocks would is okay, especially when you got checkup, um, if you really need the drill. You know, you need the particular, or sorry, you need the particular, the block at the time. I, I feel like this deck's probably more about, I think we discussed Android 18, and not to give away play style per se, but I know that with Android 18 Selective Rejuvenation on like level 1 and 2, for example, um, and 3... Yeah, actually, every one of the levels, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, every single level uh, rejuves target, like specific targets. Uh, her four only rejuves when you get there. Yeah. But then you win, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but being able to like put put the the non banish after these blocks for the right matchup, I suppose. Uh, back in the deck or the drills or something. You can get the drills from the banish some four, I believe, can't you? Yeah, I've. Yeah. Uh, I've rejuvenated checkup drill and Android attack drill when I go to four quite a bit. Yeah. So that's very, it's very degenerate. Yeah. It's a very, very interesting. Um, Anthony, you got any, uh, I guess was closing comments for the, the block lineup attack lineup. Uh, I would just ask Shane, like, are there any cards that aren't working for you that are like questionable or something that you're like, I'm kind of considering swapping this out for something else. It's so good. Like, Orange is 
such a powerful style. Uh, I don't think I would cut any cards entirely. There could be maybe slight tweaks. Like, do I need two juke? Could I cut one juke for a contro? But this block ratio has been working. So I'd really have no insightful or worthwhile reply to that. It's just, this has worked and I'm hesitant to play cards that make it more like adaptive because adaptive 18 is better than this for sure. Uh, so I try, I'm trying to build this deck to play to what this deck does better, which is go fast. Yeah, that's interesting. When? And why do you feel adaptive is better? So, just like better, like comeback potential or what? It's it's just a lot more degenerate. Um, having the plus one life on your mastery from the start of the game, which makes this crit, is huge. Like this doesn't crit turn one in this deck. Yeah. Um, adaptive is a lot more flexible because as the game goes on, this deck starts to get worse. Like with any aggro deck. You start to lose steam as the game goes on, and you start to get outground by these opposing decks. Adaptive 18 doesn't get outground that easily. It it will outgrind you because she has so much targeted reju. Uh, and then it it can run a lot more of the really broken cards like Orange Leisure. Yeah. Orange Leisure, despite being broken, is not that good in this deck. But no, in Adaptive 18, you play to its full strength. Yeah. Um. I was going to ask you, so I know, I think Marcus Sim, or Marcus Sims, I know he was playing Combative 18. I know he did pretty good with that. So where do you rank? I, 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 so my, my personal understanding um, from what you said and, and, and looking at the list and everything. Adaptive or Adaptive is like the, the turn one, turn two, trying to just pop off. Adaptive is the, the long game, like probably like a turn three, four, trying to that's like coming out and setting up the modifiers and just winning the game there. Combative seems like that's in a similar camp to adaptive, but you're not necessarily trying to level, maybe, or is it just like because I, I I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't seen his. I think I looked at his list real briefly, but it feels like combative is just more about you know playing some of the combative combinations. It's just more defensive. It's just better against physical aggro specifically. It's just trying to use like check up drill a bit more, and like swerve. It feels like. Um, and it feels like maybe that doesn't necessarily have as much pop off because you have to reestablish your board state, and you probably don't want to level as much per se. Is my understanding? Does that make all sense to you? So with with that in mind, where would you rate the three of those decks in terms of tier between them? I, I think adaptive and combative are really about the same in terms of overall potential. It just depends on the meta. When I went to Gastonia and got second place with adaptive eighteen. I think I could have honestly, considering what matchups I ran into, I could have maybe steamrolled the whole thing with Combative 18 because her defense is ridiculous. Yeah. And she's so consistent. Combative 18 is is a ridiculously consistent deck because you search everything. Three leisure, three memory gives you six extra copies of every drill. Yeah. And then PowerPoint is like 10 copies of every drill, you know? Like you have the drill and then your nine tutors. So the, the downside is it's not a fast deck. Um, it's fast to set up, but like you still want to set up. You're not going to enter and blow your opponent out of the water a lot in that deck. Yeah. So it, I'm trying to, it's more rigid, but it's more defensive. So in a very, very aggressive meta, combative can do really well against aggressive physical decks because you're just going to stonewall them and then they'll die. They'll just burn themselves out against you. Like I beat Resourceful Broly by 45 cards with that deck because combative is such a stupid and free mastery adaptive 18 is a lot more aggressive than that and it's the most comfortable with the games going either way you can go fast or you can go slow if your opponent tries to enter early and blow you out of the water you might just sack them right back and like unleash up fierce attack and now now they're losing because they dare to try and enter on a board deck yeah <laughs> like and then this deck is trying to go very fast, enter from the get-go and start smashing your opponent. And ironically, is it ironic? I don't know. Uh, the existence of combative control really hurts this deck because it's so hard, almost impossible, to blow combative out of the water early on with an energy deck so badly that they can't come back. 
because eventually they're going to get check up. They're going to use check up to loop dismissal. That's interesting. And... That's interesting that you said energy versus physical because I feel like physical is the worst matchup between the the sage gain, the minus one modifier, and orange swerve being a double block, on top of being able to loop check up versus energy only has still with the dismissal to bounce check up once. So that's interesting. That's an interesting statement. Bad there. either way. Like uh, the moral of the story is aggro is actually. I don't care what people say. Aggro is bad against combative. Yeah, it, I, I believe it so really. Too. If if you think aggro, and true, sometimes you'll blow them out of the water. But if if a combative deck chooses to build themselves in a way to beat aggro and just sell out to the defense and the combat control, they'll just crush aggro ninety percent of the time because checkup drill is such a degenerate free cycle of defense yeah and with physical they'll run out of swerves swerves bau they'll run out yeah but against energies they will just rejuvenate dismissal every turn and you will have to attack into steady drill attack into dismissal for dismissal and then they probably have hiding drill. so every single turn so with those statements we'll talk what do you think are the good matchups what are the bad matchups for the deck it's about the same as adaptive 18 to be honest it's just you you win harder against um you win harder and lose harder i guess is a way to put it so against slow grind decks uh this deck can really just blow them out because it doesn't need to take any time to set up uh i feel generally speaking i feel pretty good against black control because all their degenerate tools are anti-physical beats like yeah. black delay mm -hmm. um yeah so, and all black decks run two or three D-Birth. Not all black decks run Energy Web. Yeah, Energy Web definitely gets skimped on. And uh, saying a bad matchup for this deck would be something like Imposing Gohan, like a, an ag another aggressive deck that is even faster than this deck. Like, this deck's trying to go fast, and even though you don't depend on stages to throw attacks, against a physical aggro deck, uh, you will eventually be at zero, and they will not, and now all their attacks are doing 12 or 14, while your attacks are doing so, 8 So they just 10. outpace you damage once you hit zero? Yeah. yeah. You need to, like, get a, get a huge time combat, especially physical aggro decks that play Unleashed, uh, if they're counter unleashing you, you're losing so much. Unleashed ultimately kind of devolves a lot of matchups into being unleashed contests. He he who Even... draws unleash first but plays unleash second, kind of. <laughs> oh my gosh, such wisdom, such wisdom. If that is if that is not <laughs> that is if that is not something I learned very hard uh, in the early days of of Fancy was that so. Uh, well, the, I mean, so as far as the... the uh, too, because against physical aggro decks, at a certain point, you just got to unleash it. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, it seems, talking? It, yeah, can you hear me still? Oh. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just couldn't tell if you were deferring to me or if I should defer oh, no. to you. Oh, no, I was just saying, I think that's really interesting. So I, essentially, just seems like Adept, Adept is, is faster Adaptive 18, but without the longevity. So you're you're really selling it on the early game. I mean, I, I've I've kind of already made this point, but it, it just seems like yeah, you have the same similar good matchups, and the bad ones are just a bit more pronounced because you don't have the recovery of adaptive. So yeah, you blow out your winning matchups harder. Most of the matchups that eighteen wins in adaptive are the matchups where her opponent, like her best matchups, are other mid range decks because you're going to out mid range them so hard. Your early game explosiveness is better than most like almost all mid-range decks and then your late game grind is better than mid-range deck other yeah. mid-range deck too uh this deck was a little worse against um the extreme ends of the board like against extreme aggro and against extreme slow roll control yeah. however uh it does better against less niche decks um like enhanced actually with this deck has been a really tough matchup because if you don't have fierce attack you're not doing any damage yeah definitely. they just soak it up yeah big big endurance and adaptive 18 has done much better in testing because you can pass you can just wait you can just build up your drills and then 
on that one fierce attack combat, you're going to have so many mods that you really make it count. But with this deck, even in a fierce attack combat, you know, you're going to hit turning kicks and they're going to get protected drill and you're just going to want to die. I hate and hand. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, this is a really cool deck. I, I love the list. I mean, we've played it. Uh, I, I'm this matchup before I played a couple different decks against uh, Adaptive 18. And I've always been impressed with how fast this deck pops off. I think this is like, this is truly like what Adept Energy wanted to be back in Panini really badly. Like Yamcha really wanted to be. Um, David Meckler, you know, depth. This is this is this is the deck that I think he would have loved to have seen happen. I mean, granted, he was trying to go anger stuff, but this this is just such a cool deck. I don't really feel like there's it's so unique. I don't feel like there's any adept energy deck like this, and that that is kind of why I kind of asked to, uh, to showcase this after you, me, and Anthony were talking. I, I think it's just such a strong, cool deck, um, and I really and if for all, for anybody to present this deck, you being the person, I think was was probably the the just cherry on top just the 18 masters so i really appreciate you for showing this and sharing this list shane i will say on on that topic of i so obviously i am the most uh well-known 18 player mm. um i do not think that that makes me the best because i do have the best results right now however something that happens when you play her enough when you play the same deck at all enough is you start to get locked into your ways yeah so uh, I have, I try to keep in mind that I am really, I've been doing the same thing for a long time and there's been a lot of new cards that have come out over the past couple of sets and I could be, I always wonder if I'm missing out on some incredible combos. Like when I went to Gastonia, I wasn't even running Unleashed with Quick Blast. Palm Charge wasn't out yet, yeah. but I should have been running Quick Blast and Unleashed. It just would have made the deck so much better. Because the way that you win in this deck is you enter on level 3, and then you go to level 4. Almost no deck can survive that. Because your 3 searches Toss, but searches Disc, and then you go to 4 and Toss Disc again. It's hard to live through that. And if I was playing Unleashed, I could have done that a lot more. So, uh, yeah. I... Oh, part of I the like reason. Deck. Yeah, no. I mean, hey, part of the reason we 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 do deck breakdowns, and the reason I post the decks is for people to come look at the deck lists and discuss and and find, you know, new combinations, new things to have critiques. So, um, you know, this goes to anybody that ever watches the deck list videos. I always look at the feedback. I always love to take people's feedback about the deck list, and I think I'm sure Shane would feel the same way about this. So, I think this has been very constructive uh, for everyone. Yeah, we'll what was the video. thing I we needed to bring up with this deck? We were, talk, we were talking about it before we started the video. Anthony said we needed to bring it up. Anthony didn't write it down, so Anthony doesn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> was it? Was it? Um, was it the thing that Wayne said to me? Was that what it was? No, it was something Shane said. It was pretty insightful. Was it? Yeah, build, was remember. it Build Beauties? No, no. I feel terrible. Yeah, we've had such a long discussion tonight. It's it's. I do not remember, unfortunately. The orange uppercut. Um, I I will just add the one orange uppercut because we kind of immediately went from that to something else. Yeah, it's incredibly infuriating because against Adept eighteen, you're holding energy blocks because this deck will just like. Every attack just does like a billion damage, and you're like, oh, I need, I need to hold all my energy blocks. And he throws this one physical, physical attack that tutors a drill and an attack at the same time. It is a, annoying as hell. Like this, this card in particular is a stickler for me. It's, it's really annoying to see it. Um, like you'll, I just seeing him hit with one attack and then he knows you don't have time. He'll tutor freaking fierce attack. And then the game's over. Like that's, that's what this deck thrives on. Yeah. Man, I'm glad that you, uh, hate it. <laughs> it so sounds like deck building. Well done. Well, this has been a long video. Um, I, for anybody watching, I really appreciate it when you guys watch, um, I do this content for everybody to just be involved and get in and, and be a part of this. But as I said, I probably said in the beginning of the video, if you have a deck 
list that you would like to share with the community and that you would like to showcase by all means why don't you shoot me a message either on facebook or youtube it really appreciate it uh, i always love hearing feedback and comments from people but i just want to thank my my two cohorts here shane and anthony thank you guys for coming in and talking about this deck i really appreciate it this is what makes the game for me thanks for having us on man i really appreciate frank, it we want to thank you yeah thank you for creating content for this game that we all love Oh, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Well, anyway, guys, I just want to say again, thanks, and I hope you guys enjoy the deck list. Take it easy. Peace.